Greetings, Wargamers. We're your hosts, Trevor, Jay, Josh, and this is... Shitting Attack. Attack. Chain Attack is sponsored by Discount Games Incorporated. Discount Games Incorporated specializes in customer service, low prices, and prompt shipping. You can find our web store at www.discountgamesinc.com. Welcome to Chain Attack. I'm your host, Trevor, and I I might be terrarian out. Oh, oh, interesting. Who knew that it could happen? <laughs> we'll see. I'm still playing, but we're still oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, I'm Jay, and like I had s- such great hopes for you, uh, Trevor, that we had we had found the world of Tanks Killer. Uh but it gets oh, worse. It gets worse than that. So are world you of back? oh my god. World of Tanks does this thing called Clan Wars, which is a it's like two or three times a year, and it's two weeks long, and it is the most grindy thing you guys have ever seen or heard of. It's basically straight World of Tanks games from well five o'clock our time until basically midnight every night straight for two weeks, and the next World of Tanks Clan Wars starts February seventh, which for those of you counting at home goes straight through valentine's day which i think is a horrible idea um but i've already cleared I mean, it with my wife so yeah <laughs> that's that's how bad it i'm sorry that does feel bad it feels bad it is bad it's yeah bad. it's bad um uh i am josh gosh dang it i i i don't know what my witty banner is supposed to be because all i know how to say these days is wheeler for idaho.com <laughs> there's going to be a press release on monday so you know the, that's that's the kind of exciting life i live right now i'm i'm very excited to to see like what the final vote total is <laughs> after um you know once once this is all done yeah yeah well because I guess that makes two of us because again uh, you still have the capacity for hope, and so <laughs> I'm not sure if I said my name, but I'm I'm Jay, and I I wish I could still have hope. I jumped ahead. I thought you had said your name. Uh, maybe I did. Uh, I'm also so uh, we talked in the the preview that uh, I've been playing a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic Seven with Brian, uh, hot seat in bed on our our TV screen in our master bedroom and last night i think there's a decent chance that josh had woke up before i fell asleep today um what 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 time did you wake up josh well i really woke up at 3 30 but but call it 4 30 this morning are you saying that but did i win on both of those uh yes yeah it was about it was about four thirty or five when I fell asleep. Oh my gosh. Woke up at about nine. So So uh if if I'm a little punch drunk during this, then that's why. We'll allow it. <laughs> so speaking of punch drunk, I uh I'm taking part in a medical clinical trial, basically. Okay. And and so yesterday I was at this clinic for about thirteen hours. And during this period, they they drew blood 46 times. Oh, wow. Uh, which each time they drew blood, they actually drew it twice. Once the blood that they threw away, and then once uh, for a clean sample. So they actually took my blood 92 times, even though they're very, very small increments. I yeah, I like, assume that, that they just have like a, a port that stays in you. Yeah, they, they, they plug an IV thing into me that yeah. they just shut off and then turn back on and... Um, anyway, at the end of the day, uh, my vision was getting just a little bit blurry. <laughs> just having a <laughs> tough time keeping my blood pressure up. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so, yeah, I might be a little punch drunk myself. They, I have really bad veins, and every time I go to the doctor and they take blood, which as a diabetic happens once a quarter, 
um, they usually have to stick me three, four times. Um, to put this IV thing in me, they stuck me five times in my left arm and never once got it to work. And so they had to move it to my other arm, uh, which was not their preferred way because the the study required the arm to be heated. So they had to heat me for 30 minutes before they could do this. So they put me, it put me 30 minutes behind because they had to move, well, more than 30 minutes after the, all the attempts at sticking me uh, to the other arm. Anyway, uh, so I feel way beat up today. <laughs> yeah, my dad will will just have like these huge bruises on his arm from his from blood draws. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right. Discount game scene. Yeah. Just, just like, just go and <laughs> in these dark times, the one bright shining light is, uh, spending money to feel better about yourself. So it's more board games. Yeah. There's, there's no better place than discount games Inc. to, uh, make this happen. Um, so we're going to, I guess, if have a few mini pitches or topics or reviews that we're, we're going to talk about. And the first, I, I guess, first one I'm going to go with is, is more of a review with a, I'd hope that it would be like a review and a pitch of like, Hey, this is really cool. Uh, you should watch it. Um, instead it is going to be a, this is a cautionary tale. Is that what's happening? Yeah. More of a cautionary tale. Um, I mean, okay, so the show that I'm going to talk about is the TV show Invasion on Apple Plus. Okay, I've and, seen this. Yeah, yeah, I saw ads. I'm, uh, it did look appealing. Yeah, it did. It had me interested. So you watch the trailer and you're like, okay, this this looks interesting. I mean, who doesn't love a good, you know, alien invasion? I mean, V, right? Right. We, yeah. We grew up with mm, v. v. Kids ask your grandparents. Right, and it has Sam Neill as you know splashed throughout the uh, trailer, and you know who doesn't enjoy uh, uh, him doing great acting through a TV series. And it also another thing I will say is so from what I looked at online, this is ten episode TV series that most of the shows are around like fifty fifty five minutes. There's a few that I think are around 40 or 45. Um, but you you look at the one of the th- one of the things that I will say is that it does remind me a little bit of Foundation in that the it's it's a TV show that looks very good. Um, it's obvious that they spent a bunch of money on making this. Um, one of the things I read was that the budget for this was 200 million dollars. Um, which would not surprise me, but they should demand a refund. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a crazy amount of money to me. Like, right? That's literally what's in the governor's budget for, you know, roads and infrastructure in Idaho. So, yeah. So, I like, I don't know how much of this I should say is like, a, is, would, okay, would you would you consider something happening at the end of the first episode to be a spoiler, or would it be acceptable to talk about that? I would not consider that, especially in this context where you are you you are the prophet on the mountain looking down and saying, "Beware." Yeah, the chances of me actually watching this are very slim already because I just have other things. But sure. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm ready. Okay. Well, for anyone who I guess is worried about this being spoiled for them, skip ahead or something. But like, here's literally what one of the things that is just like most amusing to me about this, um, this TV series. So it, the pilot, there's basically four plot threads, four different sets of characters that you're following along. And one of them is Sam Neill's character, who is a sheriff in like Nebraska. Seems like typecasting, but okay. And you are seeing him on his last day as sheriff, and he's about to retire because um, because he has Alzheimer's. He's he's developing Alzheimer's, and and so his last day, uh, things are afoot. There's things that are uh, going on, and so there's like these crop circles or things going on in the crops, and so the 
and he doesn't know what's going on. And he goes to, then it goes to that evening and they're having like this retirement celebration for him. And they give him like, you know, the mayor names this, you know, blobby blue sheriff day in this town. And then <laughs> he runs out of the party and he goes into one of the uh, crop circles and he gets like an alien or something comes up out of the, out of the ground uh, injects him in the back of his neck and he falls down to the ground and collapses. And that's uh, cue credits. Okay. And so I, I end this and I think, Oh, okay. So this is probably going to be like a body snatchers. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Alien yeah. movie show. Right. Sure, and I'm like, sure, Hey, sure. that's kind of cool. You know, there's, they're okay. going to have like this, you know, sheriff who has Alzheimer's who isn't exhibiting his, you know, symptoms anymore or, you know, something like that. Right. Uh, if you tell me he's dead, then we're done with this bitch. In, in the remaining nine episodes, uh, you do not go back to Nebraska. There make no reference to Sam Neill. You have, there is nothing in reference to body snatchers. I have no idea why he's in the pilot other than to be Sam Neill in the trailers to get people interested in the show. What? You, <laughs> you son of a gun. You are literally kidding me with this, right? I, I'm like, not kidding This you. is an elaborate hoax. The entire episode is a J hoax. Yes? No? I, like, I don't... So, I also did a little bit more, you know, half-assed internet research. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm glad that you call it that. That's what we should always... <laughs> and that's a great acronym, too. You did some hair. <laughs> I, I wish I, I could say this, that I invented that, but it, it is from another I, podcast. That's fine. I, I but know. they didn't turn it into an acronym, did they? Probably yeah, that, not. Yeah, that's Joss's job. I, I know from long having read on Facebook that the that, that hair is official, so go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... You know, there's basically two theories behind uh, why it's like this. And one is that um, either A, they, they literally just wanted Sam Neill in, in the trailer to get people interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, or, that's, a, that's a good theory. Or B, there was – this was started filming during the pan, – before the pandemic and then production shut down with the pandemic and it's been like this long – kind of ordeal getting the show made and so one theory is that the th show is just kind of wrecked by the inner by by, by, by covid yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. blame covid always yeah. safe but you know you would you would think that this is like an the type of issue that a show couldn't recover from or that like but the problem is that there's there are just weird things that there are things that happen in the movie that you have no idea why they happen or what's happening or things that, you know, like plot lines that never get resolved. Like, like, it's just, have, like it was like, written by Robert Jordan. Yeah. There's like, how, how can you have writing that is this bad <laughs> and spend $200 million on it? <laughs> so, so, I, so looking at general reviews, it's gotten horrible reviews from lots of critics. And the part that blows me away is, according to this, it got renewed for a it second season. It got renewed. Season. I know. Well, that's because we got to find out what happened to Sam Neill. Yeah, we have Jeez. to. They have to <laughs> try to add some coherency to this show that uh, you have no like. And the thing, the other, other this must, part, this must what. This must be what happens when you're Apple and you have more money than God. It is. And yeah. nothing to do with it. Yes, it turns out that uh, when your specialty is making software and phone hardware, that doesn't necessarily translate to... <laughs> Good <laughs> ride. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's... it's yeah, out, out next year, Chevrolet puts out a TV show. Yeah, I'll be signing up for that one right, right. now. Sure. I mean, the other thing that's that is kind of a um, an issue with it is that so once you're done with the pilot, there are uh, basically three plot lines or three groups of characters that you're following at that point. Right. And so the issue is that 
like one and a half of the plot lines are people that are unlikable. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and so like one of them is a soldier and I'm just kind of like, it would be okay if you died. <laughs> and we, like, why aren't you the guy who got stabbed with the <laughs> body snatcher that I don't know is a body snatcher, but you know, we're, we never hear from again. So, um, Okay, so just just so we are clear here, just for a second. Yes. Let's discuss. The guy who wrote most of these episodes is a guy named Simon Kinberg. He wrote, okay. or at least partially wrote most of them. So on, I'm going to skip the, just for, for comedic effect, I'm going to skip the good things on his resume, and we're just going to talk about the, the things that are a bit shady. So he wrote X-Men 3, The Last Stand. Oh, okay. 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 He wrote, he wrote tri- tri- Triple X, X, State of the Union. Uh, I mean... You get what you pay for there. He he wrote the 2015 Fantastic Four film. He wrote X Men Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix. Ooh, nasty. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So he clearly has a record of um not putting out the best stuff. Now I'll be fair to him and say that he does have writing cre- credits on X Men Days of Future Past. And uh, I'm assuming he must have been a contributor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> clearly, there is a uh, a trend here. I mean, the it it's mostly just sad because it feels like it's such a cool concept. You are you know seeing an alien invasion through the experiences of these different people around the globe. Great elevator pitch. Which yeah, that's basically World War Z the book. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he clearly is a better producer than he is a writer. Just looking at the things he's produced, he's he's got some great credits in that particular mm. thing. But writing, not so much. I mean, I did kind of end up enjoying it just because I'm evidently a sucker for being a sucker. But <laughs> uh, unless you have copious amounts of time on your hands, I cannot in good conscience recommend this to anyone man i'm not gonna lie i think i might like warning episodes more than pitch episodes all of a sudden <laughs> yeah you can just suffer more and share that with us <laughs> i mean i watch <laughs> i watch all 10 episodes because i i went into it like you okay care this, that much, be, right? this is gonna be a cool pitch to something uh fun to you know a lot of people don't know about these obscure shows on apple tv and then yeah, turns right. out some of them should just stay obscure <laughs> uh okay so Josh. i my brief pitch is really i want my co-hosts and our beloved listeners out there to decide which of the two board games that i acquired this week should i actually focus my attention on you know reading the rules and fantasizing about and never actually playing okay, okay? all right does, does this include the, the echo yes. one Yes, it oh, does. excellent. I have some opinions. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. So I- I'll tell you the games, and then I'll just give you the uh, you know the board game geek description, and then you can ask me questions if you want to know more about them, which I probably won't know that much more about them. But so yes, game number one, which I acquired in a trade as I was over politicking in Boise, I I took a game called Brew. And traded it to a dude for a game called High Frontier. You you uh, made out like a bandit here, by the way. Yes, yeah, no, like a hundred percent. It's funny. The guy he reached out to me, and he was like, "Hey, I I only ever play this at a friend's house, and he already has a copy. You know, I'm looking for a good home for it." And I'm like, "Am I a good home? Am I a good home?" <laughs> <laughs> Boy, uh, Josh, this is debatable, feels... right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so this is the third edition, and apparently there's a fourth edition. There's fourth edition rule books that came out for it. So anyway, so I, I haven't dug into it any more than that. But yeah, I, so I think they're print, printing the fourth edition soon, or maybe it was Kickstarter. I'm not 100 percent on that. Okay, okay, and they might have just it's, add the rule books kind of thing. I I I don't know. I'm not going to even try to venture, but I did. I sort of glanced at it a little bit. It sounded like it was coming. So I'm going to read you the description from Board Game Geek and tell me if, you know, if anybody needs a drink of water after this description, because it is dry. So High Frontier is a space exploration game by Phil Eklund. The players take control of different space enterprises trying to establish factories on planets and asteroids. 
Each player begins with three water tanks. In turns, each player uses two action points to do some of the eight actions available. <laughs> Oh such as gosh. This had to have been written by five new technologies. <laughs> no. When the predetermined number of bases is built, the game ends. The winner is the player with the most victory points. Oh my gosh. So, so dry. So yeah, it's like it has a giant board. You're basically exploring. Which is the most beautiful board for space exploration. It is seen. really cool looking board. Yeah, yeah. But so you're exploring, you know, the solar system and eventually you get outside the solar system and, but, but it's really all about like, you know, I think it's down to the, cause a Phil Eklund game, you know, Phil Eklund's the guy who does like, what did he do, Trevor? Bios yeah. megafauna. Yeah, um, all. Yeah, um, Greenland, right? And his games are like, he cares more about the simulation than the game, right? Like he yeah, wants he there to be a lot about the science it. about like your caveman severed his Achilles tendon and this is, how he will die and why, you know, and it's like, I don't, it, I don't, I don't think that's a hundred percent fair. Cause he does, he does make some of his games are fun. No. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that in a bad way necessarily. Like I, I love some of his games. Like his, the last game of his that I bought, I actually have played it solo. I, I've never gotten to play it with Trevor or Jay yet just cause I haven't suggested it, but like I played it solo probably a dozen times, which is bios origins. Which is like, you know, you're literally developing like, you know, language and and early tools and stuff like that. I mean, and so, but yeah, his games, are, anyway, his his games are cool a lot of times, and so I'm always sucked in by them. But they're his, they're always a unique concept as well. Yeah, like generally they're generally something that's never been. I mean, that's not the case here. Yeah, the, but a I lot of his games the comparable. Tackle, the comparable game to this one is like Space Industries 2300 or whatever. I can't. I'm going to look it up. I'll find it. But go ahead, Trevor, what you're saying. About I was just going to say that is, is generally he comes up with themes that are very different from the rest of what the board game industry is doing. And that is interesting. Um, beyond that, he has some, as a person, he has some <sighs> troubling tendencies. Yes. Multiple. Yeah, that's <laughs> And attitudes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is that his games, his rule books are always like, I mean, they're written like a technical manual for an obscure piece of nuclear equipment i'm going to disagree because those things get edited <laughs> <laughs> i i'm sorry uh mr eklund if you ever listen to this but you yeah please you're hire not a, someone you're, you're not, not a not great a writer editor. you need yeah. an editor please yeah. do so um in and you can tell when you read his rule books the ones that have been edited or not been edited well i don't which is why i'm kind of interested to see how this fourth edition rule book is right like if he's already produced multiple editions of this like yeah and i actually think that this one's a little different because i know this one has a living rule book and therefore it gets the ten thousand monkeys yeah yeah um, yeah. on the typewriters thing yeah Yeah. from it so we're all looking at it and i'm i think that this is actually one of his better rule books and the only reason I bring up the rulebook thing is because what was the one we were playing? Was it Bios Megafauna? It was Bios Megafauna. Yeah, we were yeah, so Bios... excited about the idea of like building these animals and their traits, and we just bounced off of it. Yeah, the rulebook was just horrendous, and I haven't gone back and seen if somebody in the community has, you know, made a a, a guide or whatever. Because I just I just I lost all interest at that point after mm-hmm. we tried to play it because it was so esoteric and the rules were just written so poorly it just you know games like that i just i give up on well, I, I, and there's like, other what's games funny out too like and the reason i i keep we keep harping on the rule book thing like for, for example bios origins like i said which i've played a dozen times now solitaire right like the actual game is not that complicated like you know it's literally like i have maybe two to three decisions that i make on a turn and then you know the mm-hmm. rules dictate what happens, but it's like getting through the rule book is so agonizing that I think it just, it has to turn a lot of people away. So, okay. Well, and I would say that having read some of his other rule books, some, they're, they're not all equal. Some of them are not bad. I mean, yeah, it feels like I, I read, what was it? Neanderthal, I think we played in Seattle that one Probably. time. Probably. Yeah. 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 And I read those and they weren't bad, but that was also, but a that's also a, kind of a smaller game. game. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. kind of a dice game. It's, you know, not quite as challenging. Uh, the game that I would say is comp- comparable to High Frontier is a game called Space Core 2025 through 2300 AD, which was a GMT game that came out about three years ago. So I think it's also reasonable to 
say that it's similar to the game that we played, um, which I'm, I'm can't remember the name of it now. Oh, shoot. I'll I'll come back to it when I when the name hits me. Okay. All right. Well, now I will I will present to you the other game that is in consideration because as I was walking down Eighth Street in Boise, uh, bet- <laughs> between events that I attended this week, I leaving, was... leaving Earth. Sorry, just hit me. Leaving Earth. Oh, the other oh one. yeah, that's the other one that you've played, right? So I I saw a little game store and like a moth to the flame, I had to walk into it and. <laughs> then I, I was like, even though I was literally, I, I shouldn't have had time to pick up a game. I somehow walked out of there with a the game, right? And so, <laughs> so this game is Anno 1800, and the description is thus. Ship fleets allow for lively trade and the development of new islands in the old and new world. You have to fulfill the wishes of your own population. While the inhabitants are initially satisfied with bread and clothing, they soon demand valuable luxury goods. You must plan production chains sensibly and keep an eye on the specialization of your population. Who can create the most prosperous island? What was the name of it? Uh, it's Anno 1800. It's a it's it's a video game uh, by Ubisoft, I think. But um, but the board game is just all about like you get these cards that are like you know citizens that are like we want we want cheese. I, I don't even know if cheese is a thing, right? Is and was the video game first? Yeah, yeah, the video game came first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and so you know it, it it I think it's kind of a euro you know. Oh gosh, it's a Martin Wallace game. game. No wonder you walked yes. out with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm contractually obligated to hate both of these games. Trevor knows this audience because of the designers in both cases. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> the, the truth is, is both of them are like a love hate relationship. They're they're. Trevor, this one looks like a card game. You know, there's cards in it. So. Oh son of a! I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and when he I'm says kidding. out, he means yeah, all the way he's, in. He's deep, he's deep, yeah. Yeah, so it's cool. I mean, it looks like every player has like their own little island board and you know, you're building up an economy on your island and trying to satisfy these citizens and and uh anyway. But yes, you are 100% right. There's been some there's been some reviewers on Instagram and stuff that have spoken pretty highly of it and that if, that affected me a little bit, but yeah, I'm like, "Oh, freak, it's a Martin Wallace game." So, how long has it been out? Um, I think it just came out end of. Oh, actually, no. What the heck? It says I thought it just came out end of last year, but no, it says on BGG it says the publication date was 2020. Yeah, but, you know, pa- pandemic. Yeah, I guess maybe it's only hitting shores here. That 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 could be the anyway. Uh, so those are the two. Uh, my my uh, co-hosts. Which one should I? read the rules for first and fantasize about never playing. Okay. So I'm going to jump in here because, uh, (laughs) this is conflict of interest. Clearly. Yeah, it's true. Um, you, when you first posted that you had gotten high frontier, I saw the theme. I'm like, Oh my gosh, how do I, when, when can I play this game? Yeah. 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 And then I saw there was my Phil Eklund and I'm like, Oh gosh, when can I not play this game? Mixed emotions. Yeah. yeah and then I, I read some reviews and they all said the rule book was pretty good, but, and all of them had the same huge, but that this was the, but was that this is one of the most complicated games that any of them had ever played. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where you can, it seems like you should be able to order board game geek on complexity. Um, but I'm not figuring out how to do it. But so its weight rating on Board Game Geek is 4.7 out of five, which has got to put Ooh. it in at least the top 50. Yeah, like now I want to find five. Like what's fi- you know what's a five? Yeah, what, what's a what's, five? What's Western Empires? I'm gonna look that up really quick. Oh, it's got to be way less complex than that. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. So 3.29. To, yeah. So and and. I basically every review that I read basically said the same thing. You will get tons of rules wrong the first several times you play this game. Mm, as if that could ever not happen to me, but okay. Yeah, well that just that compounds <laughs> on what what I already know will happen. So then I started looking a little bit more about it and a lot of them are saying the same thing is they're like this isn't just a simulation of rocket science. They're like you <laughs> You basically become a rocket scientist to play this game, and I'm like, okay, you're losing me a little bit because I thought Leaving Earth was complex, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although most people kind of agree that Leaving Earth is sort of a mathematical simulation, where if you're good at math, 
you're going to do well at the game. But there's no, there's not a lot of beyond the math. It doesn't have a lot of choice, which I totally understand. And this this game, I guess, um, puts that one to shame as far as complexity is concerned. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I like a good complex game, but this one's starting to push the edges for me. <laughs> and knowing that it's a Phil Eklund game makes me realize that, yes, they are not lying when they say that the weight's 0.7. And there's probably a few people out there who are like, oh, it's not that bad, who, who've who driven the rating down. Yeah, right, right. So um, if I'm going to, you know, trim my fingernails with a cheese grater, I'm going to choose Martin Wallace over Phil Eklund. That's just me. Wow. All right. All right. Jay, weigh in on this. Um, I mean, yeah, I would probably pick Martin Wallace, but it's, it seems that's like probably such, it's closer to Goa, you know, it seems like such a hypothetical <laughs> question because oh, I'm going to read the rule books. It's really, oh, yeah, yeah, really, that's, that's all you're saying is like, which rule book should I read? For well, I mean, you're going to read both because yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. enjoy it. So, I mean, whatever, but like we have no line of sight on ever being able to play unfathomable. And <laughs> that's true, which definitely gets prioritized above these. Yeah, no, yes. I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm so heartbroken, though, because I want to play High Frontier and I want to play it bad. Like I see it and and the and you, I think you will probably I like mean, High Frontier more, J- Josh, because like most of the reviews say that um, it, like your chances of failure are high. Like this game yeah, is going to yeah, yeah, get yeah. you down. Yeah, no, I, that, that, that is, you are 100% right that I'm excited about that. See, I read a review that <laughs> talks about third edition also being quite good, you know, like. Yeah, all of them say that it's a good game. It's just, yeah. it's really complex. So, uh, has, stay it, tuned. It has a higher, uh, BGG rating than other games. It, yeah. It's kind of very. It's also cool. older, though. I mean, it's older. That's fair. You know, but, but I do think that the, the other thing is, is I think I can do High Frontier solo, right? And so. That's the one thing about Eklund games is I feel like I can learn them solo. And so in the hypothetical world that Jay has described, the multiverse wherein I have not That's made you some of the life games. choices I made. Yeah. That, you know, you, you, we would be able to play it. And, um, and I would have figured out, I would have made some of the mistakes on my own before, you know, trying to subject everyone else to it. Although I, the review I read, it made it sound like the solo game was at least partially different yeah it sounds like you have to like strap on all of the um the variants and stuff to make the solo game work basically so so you know why not make it more complicated (laughs) all right i have i have heard the court's decision i will i will pursue anno 1800 first so (laughs) don't get me wrong if you called tonight and said let's play high frontier i'd be over there in a hot minute (laughs) i i do i have a board game I want to talk about slash an experience as a, as a drug dealer, I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, every day, you know, I get email solicitations from, uh, my distributors and especially with board games, there has to be something fairly noteworthy for me to be like, okay, yes. Like uh, stand up and take notice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, there was one that I got and I'd never heard of it. And I, I looked at it and looked up some information and immediately went, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> and, you already ordered me a copy, right? I mean, yes. And, and so then I linked it in discord and, and I was like, Josh, I, I have this new ridiculous strain of marijuana that is, you know, it's mellow. It's long lasting. <laughs> <laughs> your your reference really makes me want to see the Breaking Bad where where the guy with cancer starts selling magic in 1992. <laughs> and so oh, amazing. Here's here's the synopsis of of this board game. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Feud is a highly thematic team based strategic game that plays four to thirty two players. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, tell me more. <laughs> and is run by one to two storytellers who interact and play. You may play as one of the warring vampire clans, such as Ventru, Tremere, Gangrel, Toreador, or perhaps you'll choose to be one of the human factions fighting for their own desires, such as City Hall, the Mafia, the Ar- or the Arcanum, with many Why does more. Why sound like LARPing in a box? 
Because it is. Additionally, the game integrates the story world of Vampire the Masquerade by adding storyteller scenarios that add an optional narrative approach to the game. Players gain disciplines which give them powerful supernatural abilities unique to their characters. Lastly, teams will choose their ambitions which allow for multiple paths to victory, such as being bloodthirsty, manipulative, greedy, or somewhere in between. Blood Feud is dubbed a mega board game because unlike a traditional board game, it isn't played on a single table. Blood Feud requires a large room or two separate rooms with two to four tables. <laughs> what? Crap. I mean, it's just built are for you, a convention. I just right? have to ask, are you required to walk back and forth between the two rooms yelling obfuscate? Obfuscate, <laughs> obfuscate, Yes. Oh, please say that you are. Uh, one game, game table features the cityscape and orders, the map where players move their forces around the city and orders them to fight and take control of important territories. The other game table features the council and market where players use their best diplomatic and resource management skills to make sly trades, buy upgrades, and player level ups and make large political oh decisions. Oh my gosh. It's that will ladies, shape and, the, ladies and gentlemen meets a vampire. Yes. You're right. Yes. yes. Will shape the destinies of, of teams to determine whether they win or lose. In order to win the game, teams earn victory points through the completion of legacies, which are secret objectives that can consist of all sorts of tasks and achievements earned through gameplay. So. <laughs> I'm on board. I shouldn't be, but I'm I'm 100 percent on board. How do we How do we get 30? It's so people? ridiculous, and I so want to play it. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're just gonna make an event that is just this. I mean, that's what this is. Like, this is what a bespoke con is literally made for, what, in my what, opinion. What is its time play range? It was actually low on what it had listed. Oh, I, really? Like under an hour kind of thing? Or no, like, well, no, I think it was like two or three hours. Which okay, means, but still not like. Not like a day. Not like eight. Which right. I'm weak. Right. Never it mind. Is, I'm out. I'm less interested all of a sudden. I'm kidding. Yeah. Re- reasonable to be able to potentially get 32 players to commit to. Right. Um, okay. Unlikely, but possible. This would be the <laughs> new height of madness for us. Yeah, know, I'm excited boy. that we ordered this, Jay. How much are we spending on it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a... Two hundred dollars suggested retail game. Holy crap! <laughs> oh shoot, we're not behind the paywall anymore, are we? Okay, Laramie's Laramie's never listening to this, so I should be okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is more than my Return to Dark Tower. Did you ever see that yet? By the way, no, they're shipping right now. Oh. A lot of the people who didn't get all the bells and whistles are getting theirs currently. But the way that the oh, ship, ships arrived, yeah. all the all the bells and whistles were on the, like the last few ships, so anybody like me basically couldn't help themselves and bought everything. Is basically the last. I That's ex- unfortunate. I expect that I'll get mine probably the end of February ish. So they, they they have told me to they That's sent me an e- email point. that basically said yeah, especially because I know they're shipping a ton of them. Yeah. Um, but they they sent me an email saying here's your last chance to upgrade address. So, but every from everything I've seen, from that the point of that email to the point where you get the email of your items have shipped is usually weeks. So three to four weeks. So I, yeah, it's still a ways out, which is really rough because they're being sold in like game stores who backed the they just right. backed the base amount and they got right. you know, five, five to ten of them or whatever, and they, mm-hmm. so they're on shelves all over the place. It is it's killing me right now. All right, I have one one final pitch. No, I think we need to plan. 32 people. How do we get this done? Okay. How do... <laughs> well, we just need to figure out the day, honestly, I feel like. I mean, it, it, it feels we... like this should happen in October, right? Like, Do we collectively know 32 people who yeah. will actually show who up? Who would do this? Yeah. Well, the, here's the thing. Like, There are people that I think you could pitch this to, and I just don't know if you would want to, that would be like <laughs> – No, no, don't, don't take that the wrong way. I mean like people who would love to do like a – dinner murder mystery a game you know you know those yeah, games yeah, i'm yeah. talking about right like Are i mean you i'm saying that you would pitch this to muggles yeah oh. is that crazy am i yes. no you don't think okay well you yeah, asked me if i knew 32 people Trevor, i mean yeah sure that. if i pitch this to muggles i can get 32 people <laughs> i don't know if you can because because <laughs> <laughs> they would be like you want me to do you know what, what trevor here's what we do we just go to a twilight uh, fan convention, we're golden. You'll get, thir- <laughs> you'll get 32 people. Well, well, 
would have happened is like back in the day we would have like gone to War Machine Weekend and been like And then we would have done this instead well, of Well in the Machine. evening we we would go to dinner and then be like, Okay, after dinner, let's get thirty two people signed up to oh, yeah. play we, this. We, we could have totally done it there. That's yeah. not a problem yet, right? The problem is we live in a pandemic. Yeah, like there there's a part of me that's like I'm going to be <laughs> in how much space with how many people? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean and when should I expect to see this or... anyway, Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure on when the. Oh yeah, when? It, who knows when? It... Um, one second, and I I will try to tell you. Anyway, we'll figure this out. You know, we'll send it, out the help. we'll send out the Google f- surveys like I've done with some of the other big games. It's just we got to go a little bigger this time. Uh, it, it's it will same, help. basically one month. Okay. Wow. Okay, cool. It will help once we see the the rules or get some reviews to kind of know complexity and what we're looking at. Cause like it's, what level of muggle you could actually try to invite almost. Yeah, because there's some, there's some fringe muggles who are, you know, board game curious who would probably <laughs> jump in. But yeah, I, I, I'm afraid of the complexity as to how far in you could go. And, and uh, again, you know, if it's if it's ladies and gentlemen esque as far as complexity goes, and much of the fun is had from a social aspect, I, I mean, we've I between Josh and I, we could get an awful lot of teens involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true, right? You know, if if my daughter can play, you know, now we're adding her and potentially friends, uh, that sort of thing. It's not hard to get to expand when you get into the realm of people who don't have responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I saw a, uh, I, I saw a pretty funny tweet that was basically like, uh, you know, what is a what's a group chat? I have two friends and neither of them know each other. <laughs> uh, um, well, I we 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 no longer have uh enough time for my. My next pitch. Well, so then we'll save it for the next pitch for edition. the next episode. Um, were there any other uh, topics that you guys had? I can quick pitch dicey dungeons. Um, are you, are you sure you don't want to save? Actually, let's let's it's save not, that. It's not. It's not worth more than five minutes, honestly. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here's my quick pitch. It's a fifteen dollar game that should be sold for five. Okay. Mm. So that was that, a that's a good quick pitch. Yeah, I mean, if you see it on sale for five, it's worth some time. It, it is a roguelite game where you are basically going through a dungeon using random abilities where you roll uh, dice depending on your level, and then you assign those dice to the abilities. So these are just normal D6 dice. There is there is dice manipulation on the abilities, and dice manipulation like splitting dice and combining dice and other like that. Uh, and basically, there's different characters like there's a warrior there's a robot there's a a witch um, i don't remember all of them and you're basically trying to complete the dungeon which is procedurally generated and beat a boss at the end. also and, it's kind of a game show right yeah it, the, the shtick is that um you're on a, a you're being against your will put on a game show where you have to escape the dungeon and then you spin the wheel and if you get any result but the skull you get your prize and you escape the dungeon um, however, the, the, the joke is, and I'm going to spoil this because it's not all that funny, is that every time you spin the wheel, the one result on the wheel, which is the skull, which keeps you in the dungeon, comes up every time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it never it never comes up anything but the skull. I'm assuming maybe if you complete all of the – because there's different levels of difficulty. I think if you might complete all of them, you might get the – you might if you complete all of them, you might get out of the dungeon. I don't know. But it's – yeah, it's 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 basically – hidden as a game show and it has some witty dialogue that gets old really quick um it, it is a, sort of a fun sit down and play a game for 10 minutes sort of video game but it's it's a 15 dollar game and it is not worth it, in my opinion so and it feels like some of the strategies are not very in-depth or complex mm, so yeah right i do already own it because well it's a roguelite so yeah <laughs> <laughs> Turns so, out Steam knows me almost as well as my board game dealer. <laughs> so anyway, it's something to look at if you find you know roguelites interesting and you're willing to play a game like that that's maybe a little bit lighthearted and try it out. Uh, but again, recommendation, no more than five bucks. Okay, well, 
uh, I guess let us know what uh, what you guys think of these pitches or anti pitches. Warnings and pitches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let us know if there's uh, anything you would like to pitch to us or that you think we should maybe consider.